Mauna Loa, the largest active volcano on planet Earth, is not erupting. Under its blanket of white, Mauna Loa appears to be in a deep sleep. However, the volcano is showing signs of unrest. Recently covered in snow, the summit of the Hawaii Island volcano rises 13,681 feet above sea level. Scientists believe this is where the next eruption will occur. Eruptions typically start at the summit, and within minutes to months of eruption onset, about half migrate down into the northeast or southwest rift zones. When that next eruption will occur is not known. Since 1843, Mauna Loa has erupted 33 times. The time between eruptions ranges from months to decades. The last time the volcano erupted was 35 years ago, in 1984. The U.S. Geological Survey Hawaiian Volcano Observatory currently has Mauna Loa at an advisory alert level. That is one level below the alert level currently in place for Kilauea, the much smaller volcano to the south, which is on an alert level of watch and is currently erupting at its summit. The advisory for Mauna Loa does not mean that an eruption is imminent or that a progression to eruption from its current level of unrest is certain. Scientists said measurements show continued slow inflation at the summit, which is consistent with magma supply to the volcano's shallow storage system. They also report that rates of deformation and seismicity have not changed significantly over the past week and remain above long-term background levels. These signs of unrest were detailed in a recent online video produced by the U.S. Geological Survey as a part of January's Volcano Awareness Month. Geologist Frank Truesdell, who has studied Mauna Loa for two decades, presents a 40-minute talk. Now, what does the seismicity look like now? Including this information on the current activity. Here's a plot of Mauna Loa. Here are the earthquakes in the northwesterly sector. So here's the summit caldera. Here's the south caldera of Mauna Loa and then the upper southwest rift zone. And so the seismicity is starting to look very similar to what preceded the eruptive activity in 1975 and 1984. If we look at earthquake counts now over the last two years, we see that we have bins of earthquakes and these are bin by the week. So you can see the blue lines represent earthquakes per week and there were periods of time where we went relatively high and then we've gone back down to below 100 per week and then we go up to 100 per week and sometimes exceed, kind of come back down. And so we're kind of going up and down, but these are in earthquakes per week, not earthquakes per day. So this is the kind of plot that we would expect to see. And if it was earthquakes per day, then we're kind of in the same range as prior to 1984. Here is the plot by earthquakes per day. And you can see that sometimes we get up to in the hundreds, but mostly you can see the earthquakes, if you were to kind of do a best fit line, we're still relatively below 50 earthquakes per day. And the most recent period, we're actually down in seismicity. So, so far, even though the activity looks fairly active at the summit, the earthquake counts aren't quite up to the same types of numbers that we saw prior to 1975, 1984. If we look at just one year ago, we still have GPS data over the past year. We basically have the same portion of the flank showing accumulation of magma. We have this nice radial pattern around the flank of the volcano, showing that accumulation of magma. And yet, those facing the Kilauea side or on the eastern flank of Mauna Loa are still moving at a faster rate than those on the west side. Let's look at six months ago. Over the last six months, seems to be a little bit more equity, same inflationary center. And looking at this vector compared to these vectors, they seem to be moving 
almost, well, they seem to be of the same relative scale or size. Although these vectors here and this one here are still shorter than both of these or all three of these on this side. So one is showing a comparable rate of motion or velocity, I should say. Now looking at three months ago, look at three months. Still, we have this radial pattern. It, it looks like possibly that it moved a little bit further north because these arrows are pointing down instead of away. And maybe there's a possible shift of inflationary center to the northern part of the caldera. And then we'll look at the last month. And if we look at the last month, because it's a shorter baseline, we expect the arrows to be shorter. And this pattern of this side having larger vectors than any other side is still holding up. So this portion of the flank of the volcano is moving more rapidly than the other flank of the volcano on the other side of the caldera. And what are we missing? We're missing more consistent and persistent seismicity. So instead of having a sawtooth pattern on those daily counts, we'd like to see a gradual ramping up and not have days in which the seismicity drops down to or below 10 earthquakes per day. And as I said, in 1975, we were in the multiple hundreds of earthquakes per day. And in 1984, we were between 50 and 100 earthquakes per day. And so we don't have that yet. So we need more consistency and we need more persistent seismicity. In addition, we need to see increasing rates of deformation, a substantial radial pattern. And with increasing rates of deformation, we should also have corresponding increasing rates of seismicity. So what's the take home message? People should be aware of the hazards. You should stay informed. Mauna Loa is showing signs of reawakening, but an eruption is not imminent. 